Hey, so um, this video, I'm basically trying to help somebody work through some issues that they're having, uh, cutting with a up cut, up down cut bit or a compression bit. Um, they're getting a lot of blowout on the face sheets and he's trying to figure out why. Um, I just happen to have the same bit, so I'm gonna kind of run through um, my feeds and speeds and what I use for my machine and um, try to help out, help diagnose with the problem. A lot of what I'm gonna talk about in this video is probably applicable to other similar problems. So um, there may be some content in here that's valuable. To this somebody. is the bit right here. It's a white side UD2102, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, 2102. Um, I've had this so long that the writing is barely legible. What's unique about this bit is that it cuts up right here on the leading edge for about the first quarter inch of um, stick out and then the rest is a down cut bit and the purpose for that is so that when you cut into MDF and plywood and stuff like that when this thing turns it's gonna turn this way it basically it's pulling these backside face sheets into the cut like in this direction and what that it does is it allows this bit to shear off those face sheets like scissors and then on this back side here, or the top side, uh, it's cutting down into the cut and doing the same thing. So that's why they call it a compression cut, because the cutter is kind of pulling these back side face sheets this way, and then these top side face sheets into the cut. So it's compressing the material into the cut, and then as it rotates, it's shearing them off. I did see a comment. Uh, somebody basically said that white side bits are low grade or whatever. I don't think that's true. These are mainly U.S. and um, I mean, it's solid carbide. And if you look at the geometry, it's probably identical to most of the other quarter inch compression bits out there. There's nothing wrong with this bit. Um, they don't publish like recommended feeds and speeds. And I think a lot of people just kind of try to figure it out and then they have bad results. And so there's other companies you could buy stuff from like uh, Almana or anything you get off of toolstoday.com and they provide like recommendations for feeds and speeds for all the bits they sell. And so if you're worried about it, that might be an alternative. I did call Whiteside uh, one time and I was asking for recommendations. And basically they told me the story that they, they're just, they at the time were just a machining supplier for another OEM and that OEM went out of business and left them with a bunch of inventory. And so they just started selling them out of, uh, under their own name and it did so well, they just continued making the parts um, and selling them. So they don't necessarily have, or they may not have the expertise to really provide those recommendations because they didn't engineer the, the, the parts. I think the, the bits are fine. Um, what they told me when I called and talk to them is they recommended that I go to Andrew's website and find a similar bit, like diameter, um, cutting length, and geometry, and then use their recommended feeds and speeds as a starting spot. So anyway, there's that. Okay, one of the problems you can get into with these is that, that this upcut geometry, it's about, it terminates about a quarter inch up the shank. And so if you don't, on your first cut, if you're sort of in that upcut zone on your first depth of cut, it, it'll still heave these sheets up and it'll pull them out. So you have to make sure you plunge beyond that little zone where it's trying to cut up and make sure that the contact it's getting is right here on the down cut zone. And so, like I said, it's about a quarter inch. I've had pretty good luck with a quarter inch or if you want to be really say 0.28. And so what that'll do is that'll make sure that you're um, cutting down on those face sheets on your first pass and you'll push those face sheets into the cut and they'll shear off properly. Okay, I'm doing this demo in VCAR just because it's quick and dirty. Um, so I created sort of an elliptical feature similar to what you had. I think it was a circle and then it had these two or had some slots cut all the way through the thickness. So this first pocket is gonna be cut a half inch deep and it'll cover all the area inside of it. And then I'll cut these two into, like through the full thickness of the material. Okay, I'm gonna open up my first toolpath. Okay, so I have the vector selected. 
I'm cutting a half inch deep. I'm using this end mill. Let me get inside of this and I'll show you what I have it set up at. So my diameter is a quarter inch. It's the tool diameter. Um, the number of flutes, also two. Okay, and then I'm gonna use 15,000 RPMs. I could go much faster than that, but I'm gonna just run everything kind of slow. 100 inches per minute on the feed rate. See this chip load here? We use that later. Um, I'll show you the table and you can dial that up and down. You could screw around with these numbers. Like if I change this uh, spindle speed to 18,000, it influences that number. And so like, I think what I'm gonna show you here in a minute is if I use 10,000, I could bring that up to 006. Um, so I'm just, okay, so let me go back to 15,000. Okay, now I could screw around with this feed rate and like, take it down to 50. And you kind of do the same thing. Like if I took it to, let's say 200 now, that's another way I bring it up to 0 .006. Um, so I guess the point is, is there's a differential equation between your spindle speed and your feed rate that results in whatever the chip load is for the tool. And so on the charts, they have a recommended chip load. And then you can kind of like if your machine doesn't go fully up to 20,000 RPMs or whatever the example that they give in their sheet, you can screw around with the numbers to balance it out and get the right chip load. So either like if you had to reduce your RPMs down to 10,000 then I could mess with the speed like that you'll have to go like say down to 50. Okay, so that's um, 25. Let's try 100, 150. Okay, one, let's see 135. Yeah, okay, so I'm in the kind of the same zone now. Even though I'm running 10,000 RPMs, I'm having to adjust this number to bring your chip load back to kind of the same zone. Uh, for plunge rate for this bit, I don't want any kind of like ramp in because again, that first quarter inch of the, the bit, when it goes down, it's gonna have a tendency to pull out those face sheets. So I wanna, before I even start running, if, I, if you run a ramp for the entire distance of your ramp until you get to a quarter inch, it'll you'll have tear out. So I'm just gonna have it plunge like straight in, but I'm gonna do it kind of slow so it removes that material. And I'm hoping it will be, it won't be too dynamic and it'll just result in sort of like a little spot where there's some issues that I can work out with some sandpaper. Okay, so that's kind of all the parameters I'm using. Okay, this is a um, feed and speed ta uh, table that I use from a mono tool. Um, I got this on toolstoday.com. Um, this specific cutter they use is carbide specter. It's got some magic coating on it and it can run hotter than like a regular, just bare carbide tool. Um, so some of this is probably a little off. You probably want to like dial it in and stay with like far within the parameters of this, but this will kind of get you in the right direction. Um, so this is for compression spiral router bit. And so all these numbers printed in here are calculated um, based on some equations that are at the bottom of the document. I'll show you those in a second. But so they're assuming in the, in the recommendations they provide that your spindle speed is 18,000 RPMs and you have a depth of cut that is equal to one times your tool diameter. So a quarter inch deep for this one. Um, so on this specific table, they cover two and three flute bits. So this specific one is two flutes and we're working with a quarter inch here. So I'm in MDF laminate. Okay, so for this column, this is your recommended feed rate is 220. Your chip load, which is more important than both of the other numbers is 0 0.0061. And then your ramp down is a um, hundred inches per minute. So it looks like they're cutting their ramp down speeds by 50% here. Um, so one thing that you need to understand is that this is for, this is assuming you have a very rigid production machine that's capable of 18,000 RPMs, um, and these feeds and speeds in here. So this is the really important number, the 0061. This is a number that you should not exceed. Uh, this is chip load. You can't push more material through that cutter safely and exceed this number. 
Um, I think it's, it has a f function of the geometry and uh, quantity of flutes, but there's a maximum amount of material that you could pack into that cutter. If you exceed that, what'll happen is you'll, I mean, in some cases it'll still continue to cut, but you'll load, the, these bits are really weird because what they do, if you think about it, it's pulling material from the bottom up and from the top down. So it's packing material into the cut, uh, which results in like high cut, high uh, forces and pressures being imparted on that, on the sidewalls of the material and the cutter. So if you go over that, what could happen is you'll put a lot of pressure and it could damage your part or snap your bit. Okay, down here at the bottom. Okay, so they're basically saying if you want to go deeper than 1D, okay, so 1D, all, the, all this table is apl applicable for a one times the diameter of your cutter. Um, if you want to double that, you have to reduce your feed rate by 25% or triple it, you reduce your feed rate by 50%, okay? This is all just rule of thumb stuff here. Then here's some equations that they have down at the bottom. Uh, to find your RPMs, do surface feed per minute times uh, 3.82 divided by the diameter of the tool. To find your surface feed per minute, 2.62 times the diameter of the tool multiplied by your RPM. These are pretty straightforward. I think if you really want to go back to Machinery's Handbook, you'll figure out where these came from. Um, to find inch per minute, it's your RPMs times number of fluid times the chip load. The chip load is what is important to find the chip load. It's your feed rate divided by your RPM. So this is a differential equation here, and it basically is all trying to keep you within that chip load. And then there's some stuff here about ramp down. Okay, but that 0061 is kind of the critical number. And so um, I'm going to show you on VCarve how we can screw around with that. Okay, when I was when I was messing around with this before, I was looking at this chip load right here, point zero zero six seven. So I'm a little bit higher than recommended. Um, what? Let me see if I could just edit this point. Point. Okay, this is just calculated. I don't think you can modify this. Nope. Okay, so what I want to do is turn my RPMs up until I get under that threshold. So twelve thousand RPMs. You see how that number went down? So my chip load is less than what that published rate is. It's probably good to stay under that because they're probably assuming they have a big production machine and that you're trying to hit rate. They're not looking at tool life or any of that. They're just saying this is kind of like to get a decent production feeds and speeds, uh, you'll go with that chip load. But you can reduce it. It's better to be under it a little bit and it'll improve your probably your cut quality to some degree because your machine may not be as rigid as like your idealized like production machine. And then also um, your tool life may be improved. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna turn this up to 15,000 RPMs. Okay, so we'll go down to 0045. That's still a reasonable feed rate. And yeah, so I think I'm like what, almost a third under what the recommended is. I'm gonna try it with this and I'm really confident it's gonna do fine. Um, going back to this, I'm going to do a raster cut, climb cut. I'm doing it at zero degrees so that it rasters in this long direction here because every time it changes directions, it takes like more, it'll add like more time. So it's best to have it like running the longest length possible. Also, if you're cutting anything with grain, you want to run in the direction of the grain and it'll make it so that your, your little tool path will be n n less visible on the finished product. Okay, I have this box right here unchecked for the ramp plunge move. because so I don't want it to ramp in because I need to get that up cut portion buried into the material deep enough that it's not pulling out those face sheets. Okay, so I'm gonna hit calculate. And then I have a similar tool path I made. I just duplicated this down here and selected the new geometry. So this is what is gonna result. Okay, so I'll have like, you know, I'll have like a pocket. And so it'll have a half inch distance right here, and then it'll go full depth through the material. Okay, so for this, uh, for those second pockets that are cutting all the way through the material, I'm setting that at 0.8 inches. And the reason for that is that, um, well, so one of the things I wanna say is I'm gonna zero my cutter to the spoil board. And that way when it cuts, it cuts all the way down to the spoil board. When you put in this, 0.8 inches it that's just finding 
how high the material is relative to the spoil board. Um, this program is indexed off of off of the. Uh, let me see here. Oh, whoops, right here. Okay, so I'm using I'm zeroing from the machine bed. So that way, when the no matter what thickness I put in there, the cutter is going to go all the way down and touch the machine surface or the um, spoil board surface and won't cut into the spoil board. It won't cut any deeper than that. Anyway, the reason I'm getting into this number is if you're if your job set up off the top of your material, you have to go slightly deeper than the thickness of your material. Otherwise, there'll be like a little remnant on the backside, which you don't want. You want it to cut all the way through the material. You don't want to have to do a bunch of rework afterwards to like get rid of that excess. Um, so anyway, this number in this situation, this setup that I have at point eight is important because it tells the machine how close to get to the top when it's like tramming around and stuff. And so it's less important in this situation, but if you're measuring off the top of your material, that number, it could be critical or you won't cut all the way through. Okay, let's talk about results here. So you look at the edge, this edge is like super crispy. I mean, it's like, one of the things that I don't understand is, I think I set the raster so it was cutting this way. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Um, I can go back and look. Uh, also, I should have had a starting depth here that was equal to this pocket depth. And it's kind of good I didn't because it kind of shows what happened. It starts cutting up here and it, it cut air on the first pass. And then when it got to this depth here to cut this out, we were still in the upcut portion of the bit and you can see all that blowout. So this pretty much illustrates what I'm saying is that all this crap here, it, it picks it up and throws it out of the cut, you know? And so it winds up just fraying out and all these fibers. I mean, something like this, you should just be able to, you know, hit it with, a sand, piece of sandpaper and all that it'll come off but it illustrates my point it was a mistake on my part with my tool path but it kind of for this demonstration it's kind of a good thing it worked out because it shows look how clean this is i mean it's and then you have blowout city going on right here um so anyway okay so this kind of concludes the demonstration i think um i think what what i gave you is a couple good parameters to start with um, for feeds and speeds and to kind of get you in a ballpark. Also a method to use to go look up uh, speeds and feeds for cutters in the future on toolsdoday.com. Um, and then also showed, you know, how that compression bit works and what you want to do in terms of um, getting all that so that it produces like a very crispy edge cut. Uh, and then I showed a situation where your upcut portion was sort of out inside of that zone where it was cutting the top and how it produces blowout. So 
Um, I think that was what was happening. Um, your situation looked a little bit different because it looked like you were cutting the full depth, which may be okay, but it, maybe your feeds and speeds were off to the point that it's causing um, a situation where you're just putting too much load on the tool and it's damaging the material right there in between the tool and the, um, and the cutter. So anyway, um, maybe make some uh, modifications and try it and see if it works, let us know.